Hi, y'all. Uh, today we're on the Flower Pot Podcast, and my name is Angelique, and I'm with Micah, Drew, Janaya, Kasai, Milan. And to get start off, I just wanted to ask y'all, um, what did y'all do today, and um, what was the best thing about y'all day? That's good. Um, the best part of my day was um, I took a nap after school. That's good. Thank you. And you too. The best part of my day, uh, I got to do most of my math homework in class. Actually, That's good. I'm gonna change it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gonna switch it? I up? did. I have a math test on Friday. Mm-hmm. That I did, like, yeah. work. And yeah. also, my like athletic director got mad because we were leaving at 11:30, and she was like. What? This is ridiculous. And then walked away, and it was really funny. Okay, okay. okay. I feel like the best <laughs> part of my day was I was able to um, write a story for my uh, master's in literature class. Ooh, yeah, and I really like to write stories and stuff like that. So I was like, oh yeah, I was doing it. Here. So the topic on hand that we're talking about today is um, boundaries and sexual violence. And if you don't want to um, answer this question, it's totally fine. Um, but have you have you or someone you know ever experienced sexual violence? Um, go ahead. You go. You're go. Anyways, anyways, um, I haven't, but someone I has had, yeah, like, and she still deals with that, like, daily, because, like, she, like, still lives with that, so I try to comfort her as much as I can. Yeah. Um, not physical, but, like, verbal, and this counts as sexual violence, right? Yeah, so, like, I guess, like, being catcalled and stuff like that, and, like, boys or just, like, people in general just not knowing, like, when to stop. Yeah, that's a big problem. Um, anybody else? No. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, me personally, I haven't really experienced anything like that, but I do know people who have experienced that. And I feel like it's not really my place to, like, share their story because they haven't really gave me permission. But I I just want to acknowledge that that does happen with um, women and men and people. It was just that, like, one person. Mm-hmm. Um, the next question is, what do you think are some of the reasons why sexual violence happens to young girls? For me, I just feel like men or women just feel like, um, a certain person can just be used like automatically and they're just not they don't have a right to an opinion or like a voice and I feel like they just really like you said Michael like they don't know when to stop and they don't know like what like what boundaries are um, yeah, I, would, yeah. I would say the same thing because mm-hmm. um, some men they like men and women they just like, like, they just, um, I feel like they don't like, like, grown women to do it with they like, little kids because mm-hmm. little kids don't really know what's going on. Yeah, and, they and they're just, vulnerable. Like, they will just, right. like, take it and then they will be, like, like, living with that for the rest of their life. Yeah. Until, like they are found because it's not good for them to like be in that type of predicament that they have Mm -hmm. and it's like really it's just like really disgusting Mm -hmm. to like hear it um yeah i just feel like what um what milan said like people i feel like people in general really target um 
young people because like she said like they're vulnerable and they don't know what's going on and they don't know if it's right or wrong and some people even family members sadly are doing this to them because they're like oh yeah i'm close with their say their dad and they're not gonna be like oh yeah like so-and-so touched me and they're not gonna be like, oh yeah, I know him. Why would he ever touch you? And then they're gonna think they're lying and stuff like that. And it's just a very uncomf- uncomfortable thing to come to because it's like, it's just it's unacceptable and it's still going around to this day. And people are just like, it's it's crazy. People are really sick in this world. Um, the third question is, how can we create safe spaces for girls to talk about sexual violence? Well. Uh- <laughs> you should go ahead, Milan. No, it's okay. Cause I go ahead. We haven't heard from you yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, what was the question? Um, <laughs> 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 the question was, how can we create safe spaces for girls to talk about sexual violence? Um, like we did, we could do like surveys. Mm-hmm. Um, we can like like that's why we said in the la- well that's why I said in the last episode. Tell people about us. We can mm-hmm. create websites and yeah. places for these people to go to because mm-hmm. right. it could really happen to everybody. Yeah. Um. I feel like. One second, I'm sorry. I feel. Um. Like how we can create safe spaces for girls to talk about sexual violence. I feel like we can really. Um, just talk and just share our experiences, share our thoughts, share our opinions, and just, like, just be, like, just be human and just understand what they're talking about. Because the worst thing, I feel like, in my opinion, a person can do is not, not, not agree with them or not believe them, because that can lead to, um them hurting themselves or them leaving this world because they feel like oh yes since nobody can believe me then why am i even here and in some instances sometimes it happens only one time sometimes it happens like every day and it's just like and it's 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 crazy um what are some ways we can support girls who have experienced sexual violence um we can like like so like say girls have like been through the same thing like they can like make a group together and then like they can share out their experience and like try to like help each other because like they they know they know what it feels like yeah. and like like to be like unheard yeah. and instead of like hurting themselves or something they can like pour it out into that group because mm-hmm. they know what it feels like yeah to an extent yeah yeah what do you mean to an extent like making sure that they're not um Undermining somebody else's experience or yeah. making sure they're not, um, I guess, oversharing to a point where it's overwhelming for the other party. Yeah. Um, anything else? No. no. Okay. No. Um, how can we educate young boys and men about the importance of respecting girls and their bodies? Um, I feel like we can really just show them because in some places there are museums and um, just places that you can see what these people did, what age they were, what happened. I feel like if this person or if a boy or if a girl who is doing this, um, we can really like bring them to like places where they show like what, how they experienced it, what kind of trauma and PTSD they have, what is the outcome of that, and like how it's not worth it, like how doing this like real quick or even just in general, it's not worth it because this person is having like PTSD and like all this other stuff, and it, <clears throat> and it's just it's just not worth it in general. I feel like social media might also play a part in this. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. aren't supporting girls yeah. in the way that we want to be supported. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also want to um, bring up like schools and stuff mm-hmm. and parental education. Like, as kids, we need to know about this. As kids, even like really young, because there's always a possibility mm-hmm. that it could happen to us or someone we know. Yeah. So, 
we should be learning about this. Like in elementary school, I didn't, I was never taught about sexual violence, sexual assault. Mm-hmm. Like they, I just, we need to just teach them young. Right? Yeah, exactly. Teach them young. Yeah. Um. Do you? No. Um. What I would say is that um, like Michael said, um, teach them young because they might not. Well, they will, like, in that type of predicament, they will have, like, experience, and then they will, like, ask other people to do it with them, but Mm -hmm. um, they might get frustrated if somebody else, like, if somebody says, like, that they um, they don't want to and they know it's bad for them, and then the other person pressures them to do it with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, another question that I have is, do you think the media has a responsibility to portray women and girls in a respectful manner? Yes. yes. Like, Can you repeat that? Yeah. Can you um, repeat that? <laughs> yeah. Do you think the media has a responsibility to portray women and girls in a respectful manner? Um, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like Drew was saying. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> they just, I don't know, the media portrays, like, if a girl is in a bathing suit or if a guy is in a bathing suit, mm-hmm. if they're in like re- clothes that are remotely just any type of revealing, mm-hmm. their social media doesn't comment on anything they're doing. It's just their appearance. Like, oh yeah. my God, you're so hot. I want a blank, blank, blank. Yeah. Like, I saw there, for example, my mom was showing me this post on Facebook and this mom posted her 17 year old son who was just graduating from high school he was in his senior cap and gown and these old behind one of these old women were commenting i want a blank 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 you're so fine you're so this and mm-hmm. that wasn't like there was no no like remote or like relevance to right. his appearance yeah. at all he, she was just He's celebrating old. his graduation he was like, oh, yeah, I can take you to college and stuff like that. Yeah. That is weird. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like and when kids, like, see stuff like this, they just mm-hmm. copy it. And that's yeah. why it's right. happening. It's a big, vicious cycle. Yeah. Right. And, mm-hmm. like, they, like, I don't, I forget what I'm saying. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to come back to you? Yeah, come back to you. Um, okay. Well, I was, oh. You can go. Um, what I was going to say was that... Yeah, because there's, like, a lot of apps that you can, like, go on that, like, other people might not know about. Um, okay. And... I don't remember what I was going to say. Uh-huh. No, you finish. Oh. I just remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and there was, like, a lot of... And there's, like, a lot of apps where you can go on, and then kids will go on those apps and then mm-hmm. try to, like, repeat it. Right. And there's a lot of, like... Yeah. yeah. They would, like... And in that, and I keep saying predicament. That's in yeah. that predicament. That's like that is not like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not like just like how Milan was saying. Like there's like apps. Like there's like sexual apps and websites that kids just have free will yeah. to be on, and then they copy these behaviors, thinking that it's okay. But it's not. And like I was saying about like the boy. Um, social media, people think that it doesn't have an impact because they are behind the screen and mm-hmm. that because they they can make accounts, they can make burners that won't yeah. connect to them at all. That and people are just starting yeah. to get used to it. Right, and people just like don't know. Yeah. And it, in reality, it's really affecting somebody mm-hmm. no matter if you're behind a screen or if you're up to their face. Yeah, and it's like it's crazy because people are really getting used to this and people are saying oh yeah well they're online they're not real people shouldn't be saying this at all like in any form of website or in general and i feel like people and i feel like it really really depends because if a girl is like and like if a girl posts herself in like a short skirt or like a shirt blouse or anything it's not it's it's to an extent where you have to be respectful towards girls, but if that girl wants to post herself like in confidence, like, oh yeah, I'm a, I want to be in this outfit, it shouldn't be like, oh yeah, she can't post this because... Or it shouldn't be taken sexually at 
Oh, yeah, because you should just be you should just be um just supportive of, of her in general. Like if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Even if it's to a sexual extent, like even if you think that you're like Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's not it's not good. Yeah, and another mm-hmm. experience that I wanna bring up is I was having a conversation with somebody about mm-hmm. what I wear and what I wear out and stuff like that. And I was like, quite frankly, I should be able to wear whatever I want and people shouldn't like care. Yeah. And the response that I got was, Well, in reality people do care and people mm-hmm. do like um portray these things as being sexual mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And I just realized, I was like, that's sad. Yeah. Like, we should be able to wear, yeah, we should be able to wear whatever we want and do as we please without, mm-hmm. to like, and still feel safe. Right, yeah. yeah, and still feel safe and just feel like, like, if people aren't comfortable in baggy clothes, if people are comfortable in tighter clothes, that should not be, oh, they're looking for sexual attention. Yeah. Yeah. It's like even to the point where the way they act means oh I've heard like experiences where they're like people in my grade like they would dress a certain way and then moms mm-hmm. would be like, Oh yeah, they're like a prostitute. Like yeah. girl, we're fourteen years old in the eighth <laughs> grade. What <laughs> get low? Okay. Yeah. Um, another question I have is how can I- um, un- undressed issues related to sexual violence lead to suicide. It can like make girls feel like they they like don't matter. Like yeah. it's just pushed away. So like girls are like, well, if, like if they're not gonna take me seriously, then mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like um, undressed undressed means like it's not popular, right? Undressed. undressed. Yeah, undressed. Like, okay. I feel like, like un- mm-hmm. I feel like undressed issues are really um teachers and like close family members can do that too and sexual violence doesn't just have to be oh yeah i'm touching you it can really just be a comment that right. people have like if somebody comes and like cat calls you on the street that's sexual violence right yeah or sends you maybe a yeah picture. like a yes. nude like, it's like yeah, and it's like an and unexpected uh-huh. like Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just like even if it's somebody that you know, it's just not right and it's like just very really yeah. disgusting. Yeah. And it's like say if you're talking to like an adult even and they just send you a nude out of nowhere. It's just like it's not it's not okay. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, because there's now that just, that's like, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened? There was like a lot of stuff that went on at my school. Like there was like rumors about me and like some rumors. like yeah, there was like um there was like a 15 year old boy in me who sent a nude to my best friend that we've been like we've been friends since kindergarten and like people in her do with you. huh oh, we're not gonna do it <laughs> no, no, it's that people in her people people in her class started saying it was me oh a 15 year old boy I got real offended. That's the situation to one of my teachers, and I let them know they better stop playing with me. For me personally, if they blamed it on me, I'm gonna tell them I didn't even do that. You should go to the police. Right. And if they don't feel comfortable with doing that, uh-huh. then they could come to somebody and tell them. Yeah. Because some people don't have, like really have the courage to like really step up and go to the police and stuff. Because yeah. then. Because then they'll they'll really think about it. Oh, what if this happens? Oh, and I'll okay. Um, last um, last question is: What are the resources in your community, and uh, can you provide the contact information? Can you say that a little louder? I couldn't hear you. What are? <laughs> We have community circle 
and like there's a girl community circle and then a boy community circle so like like you know that like anything you say like stays in there and like there's nothing like to be ashamed of in there and yeah yeah when i look but i feel like resources in my community are women's space um a guidance counselor a, a, a trusted adult a trusted uh, peer and uh, stuff like that thank you guys everyone for sharing and um i just wanted to uh, talk about this and now that we are coming to an end um but before we go everyone should leave something positive in the soil this is something that we will do every single episode at the end of every single episode so yes in the um, soil of yes, the flower pot and this is how we will close our future our future sessions i'm gonna <laughs> leave <laughs> i'm i'm gonna leave bravery for girls who feel like they're walked over or like they don't have a voice yeah. I'm, I'm gonna leave hope, pride, and courage. I'm gonna leave the prayers for specifically the little kids out there who don't know what's going on and are yeah. getting sexually harassed. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm leaving um, strength and bravery, like um, can I say, for just people who are going through this because I feel like a lot of people who are, li not a lot of people, but I feel like some people who are listening to this are going through sexual violence so i'm gonna just leave strength and bravery for whatever you're going on basically i'm going to leave hope because things can always get better i'm just gonna uh i'm sorry um i'm gonna um walk well, because well, i was thinking i just want to put out Drew's outfit is so cute y'all thank you okay Kasai, yeah. are you ready no Whose <laughs> outfit? Drew. Oh. oh yeah, this cute. Um, guys, I'm gonna leave love because as you should. Um, people need love. Yeah. People do it's, need it's love. Everybody <laughs> needs love. Animals need some. Dog. I hope you're being loved right now. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you said okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and thank you for tuning in, and please keep up with our journey by following us on social media. If you or anyone you know is in hope, is in need of help, immediately contact a professional. Dial 988 to call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, or if you are in an emergency, call 911. These are the Academy Flower Pots ambassadors signing off. Girls out there, remember always that you're beautiful. And and you're <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.